Okay, let's see. Today we are going to wait for somebody to connect. We'll see who connects to the class. Okay, let's see, let's check. Well, let's advance a little bit with this. We're gonna wait today. Let's see if somebody connects.
and we will see who else is here today. If not, we are going to be working in a different topic. We are going to be explaining a new topic in this class. Let's just get ready to eat. Okay, we are going to start today reviewing a topic that has given us a little bit of trouble and it's the way in which we, we apply the, the simple present tense. The simple present tense is actually easy, very easy, but we need to understand first a uh, First of all, when do we use the simple present tense? The simple present tense is a verb tense with two main uses. We use the simple present tense when an action is happening right now or when it happens regularly, okay? When we say we use the simple present tense, we are expressing a specific idea, okay? Well, actually three different types. We are talking about habits, we are talking about routines, or we are talking about facts. Now, what is a fact? A fact is like, uh, today is a Wednesday. That's simple present tense. Today is a Wednesday. That's true. Uh, my name is Douglas. That is also a fact. Okay. Now, when we talk about habits or routines, um, I wake up very early every day. I wake up very early every day. That's part of my daily routine. I always wake up very early. Something else that we need to take into consideration when we talk about simple present tense is that if you notice, I just use it an albero frequency. Albero frequency is something that we also saw in this course. And we were talking about a uh, different type, different Albert's of frequency, we were talking about always, we were talking about usually, we were talking about uh, sometimes, never. And that's something simple, very simple. Okay, now, 
Depending on the person, the simple present tense is formed by using the root form or by adding S or ES to the end. Okay? An example could be, I feel great. Pauline loves pie. I am sorry to hear that you are sick. Okay? Now, uh, we can say Rose practices the piano every day. Okay? We are talking about a visual act or occurrence. Miss Jackson travels during the winter. Hamsters run all night long. Typically, when we want to describe a temporary action that is currently in progress, we use the present continuous. Ah, that's another topic we were working with in this, in this course. Pauline can come to the farm right now because she's brushing her teeth. Okay, the students cannot be in this class right now because they are preparing to go to sleep. You see, I am using the present continuous. I am expressing something that is happening right in this moment. When I say that students cannot come to the class, I am stating a fact, simple present, because they are preparing themselves to, they are preparing themselves for going to sleep. You see, it's very, very simple. Okay, so how to form the simple present? Okay, that's different. In the simple present, most regular verbs use the root form, except with exception in the third person singular. Why? Because the third person singular, this ends in S. First person singular, I write. Second person singular, you write. Third person singular, oh, third person, not it. He, she, or it writes. Note the S at the end. It, she or it, write. Then we got the first person plural. We write. Second person plural. You write. Third person plural. They write. For a few verbs, the third person singular ends with es instead of s. Typically, these are verbs whose root form ends in o, ch, S H T H S S G H or Z. Okay. Now, first person singular, I go. Simple, no? I go. Let's get this here. Okay. Uh, second person singular, you go. Third person singular, here, notice the rules. He, she, or it goes. Goes. Not the ES at the end. Goes. First person plural, we go. Second person plural, you go. Third person plural, they go. For most regular verbs, you put the negation of the verb before the verb. As an example, uh, we won't go. Or I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. But the verb to be, it's an irregular verb. This is special. Why? Because the verb is, as you hear, is be. But when we are like uh, conjugating it, when we put the verb to it, changes. How so? Okay. First person singular, I am. Second person singular, you are. Third person singular, he, she, or it is. 
first person plural, we are. Second person plural, you are. Third person plural, they are. Okay, now, how to make the simple present negative? Okay, the formula for making a simple present verb negative is the auxiliary do or does plus not plus the root form of the verb. You can also use the contraction don't or doesn't instead of do not or does not. Example, Pauline does not want to share the pie. Why? She doesn't think there is enough to go around. Her friends, of course, do not agree. In my case, I don't want pie anyway. You see, I can contract, I can say, I can use the contraction instead of saying, do, do not, I use don't. Instead of saying, does not, I say doesn't. Listen again. Pauline does not want to share the pie. She doesn't think there is enough to go around. Her friends, of course, do not agree, or her friends, of course, don't agree. In my case, I don't want pie anyway. In my case, I do not want pie. Okay. To make the verb to be negative, the formula is a little bit different. Why? Because we got the verb B, the conjugation of the verb B, plus not. Okay? Like, I am not a student. Rose is a student. You are not my student. You are my friend. You see? Very simple. But what about when we are making questions? How do we ask a question? Okay, that's simple. The formula for asking a question in the simple present is the auxiliary do or does plus the subject plus the root form of the verb. An example. Do you know how to bake a pie? Listen. Do you know, do, auxiliary, you, subject, no, verb. Do you know, then the complement, how to bake a pie? And at the end, question mark, okay? In English, remember, we use question mark just right at the end of the sentence, not at the beginning, just at the end, okay? Okay, let's see, let's see. What else can we talk a little bit? We're going to make a pause because of my throat, okay? It's a little pause. Just give me a thumbs so I can like spread my throat. It's been a long night. I'll be back with the explanation of the algebra of frequency.
And then we are going to work a little bit with WH questions. But we have a lot to cover tonight.
Okay, we are back. Let's talk right now about Alberts of Frequency. Okay, okay. Alberts of Frequency. The second topic of tonight. Okay, guys. Thank you for Let's see. Alberts of Frequency. What are Alberts of Frequency? That's the main question. The Alberts of Frequency are are alberts that of course they change or qualify the meaning of a sentence by telling us how often or how frequently something happens okay those alberts the ones to tell us that are called alberts of frequency an albert of frequency is exactly what it sounds like an alber of time because the alberts of frequency always describe how often and this is the key how often one menudo something occurs either in definite or indefinite terms okay let's see somebody's asking for me They always describe how some how often something occurs, either in definite or in terms. An Albert that describes the definite frequency is one such as weekly, daily, yearly. An Albert describing indefinite frequency does not. Uh, specify an exact time frame okay examples of those are times often rarely okay Alberts of frequency rules okay these simple rules uh, will help us to use them in a correctly fashion let me Okay, let's see if we are going to have a feeling.
and then we are going to explain the Albert frequency rule. Okay. Let's wait for her to connect. Well, perhaps this time let's continue with the Alberts of frequency rule. Okay, we always use Alberts of frequency to discuss how often something happens. Okay, that's a fact. Often used to indicate a routine or repeated activities. So they are often used with the simple present tense. Do you remember that I told you that before? In simple present, we use Albert. Okay. If a sentence has only one verb, we place the Albert frequency in the middle of the sentence. Okay, we're going to make a pause. Hello, Noemi. How are you? Open your microphone. I cannot hear you. Costumbre. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Tell me, how can I help you? Uh, teacher, um, no one question. Is the difference in could, not would, and can? Okay. Can expresses an ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can I can work with you tonight, okay? Yo puedo trabajar con usted esta noche. You see? Mm -hmm. Can answer your questions. Puedo contestar su pregunta. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, you can help me with something. Usted puede ayudarme con algo. You see? That's very simple. Like that. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Uh, man, I did something that I shouldn't have. Okay, anyway. So, that's the way we use can. Así usamos can. Expresamos una, la capacidad o la habilidad de hacer algo. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can go tomorrow to your office. Yo puedo ir mañana a su oficina. You see? That's ah, how we okay. Also, También lo usamos para una informal request. Hemos estado trabajando con request. Se recuerda que hablábamos del would. Uh -huh. Like, hey, no me. Would you like to go to. Would you like to have dinner with me? It's an invitation, right? Uh -huh. Would you like to have dinner with me? Me uh -huh. Okay. That's formal. Very formal, okay? Okay, es que me confundí en, en el 9, en la, en la 19, ¿eh? Estaba okay. contestando. Okay, es por esto, porque escuché esta otra. Hey, Noemi, can you go with me to have dinner? En este caso le estoy haciendo una petición, pero es informal, somos amigos, Se nos reunimos pues que seamos compañeros de trabajo. Okay. Hey, let me can can I pass by your house tomorrow? Puedo pasar por su casa mañana. We're friends. We know each other. So your house, I know your family. Very simple. Mm -hmm. En este caso, cuando estamos en Ken, estamos hablando informal. Okay, you were telling me about number nineteen. Eh, estamos en el 19, me dicen, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Déjeme ver, déjeme ver. Eh, 19. Tengo ahorita la tarea 19. Uh -huh. Ok, estamos hablando de informal request. Uh -huh. 
Number one, ¿cuál es informal? Can I help you or may I help you? Can I help you? Yes. That's informal. As I tell you, can is used for informal requests. Can mm -hmm. lo utilizamos en informal. Si yo le digo, hey, may I help you? Este, pues, imagínese que yo soy el vendedor de una tienda y usted entra a la tienda y yo le digo, good evening, may I help you? Mm, formal. Formal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pero si usted entra en la tienda y le digo, hey, can I help you? That's informal. Mm. Sí, sí, the difference. Yes. Vamos juntos por la calle y yo le digo, eh, usted lleva carga en mi cel. Hey, could you carry this for me, please? Él me lo está pidiendo de una manera formal. ¿Me puede llevar esto? Pero vamos juntos, caminando, platicando, somos amigos, nos conocemos de mucho tiempo. Y tú me dices, hey, can you carry this for me? Mm. Ni siquiera le pone el please. No es necesario, no. es informal. ¿Sí? sí, es que yo creo que esa fue la parte que me perdí de la clase, ¿no? Porque yo no sé. Como ayer entré muy tarde. No, but it's just that we haven't explained that point. Completo. Ah, okay. Ese punto no se explicó completamente. Okay. Ah, ok. More on the formal. Nos enfocamos mucho en el formal. Ah, mm, mm. en el wood. Yes, ah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Ok. Tell me, what else can I help you? ¿Qué más le puedo ayudar? Eh, only. Only. Mm -hmm. oh, you're gonna leave me. <laughs> me abandono. <laughs> No, es que esa era mi duda más que me quedé. No problem. Mm. No problem. Any doubt you get, cualquier duda que tenga, even if the course is finished, you can contact me. No problem. Cualquier duda que tenga, que el curso se haya terminado, contacte. No hay problema. Ok. Thank you, teacher. No, no, no. I'm just here to help. Estoy acá para ayudar. It doesn't matter Thank if you are not my student no more, I can help you. Ok. No worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay. welcome. See you tomorrow. See you. Go to sleep. Yes. Good Bye. night, teacher. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Okay. Well, we have one. That's great. Excellent. Let's continue. We were working, we were explaining about. Let me just fix something. Cool. Uh, we were talking about the albers of frequency. Okay, okay, okay. If a sentence has only one verb, we place the albers of frequency where? In the middle of the sentence. So that it is position after the subject but before the verb we have subject we have verb the verb frequency goes in the middle okay like um, Josh never applied he takes the bus look Josh never flies Josh subject flies verb Albert in the middle Josh never flies he always takes the bus. He, subject, always, Albert, takes, verb, he always takes the bus. Simple. When a sentence contains more than one verb, we place the Albert frequency before the main verb, okay? How so? That's when we have different tenses, like when we have, like, they have, often visited Europe. In this case, have is an auxiliary. In that case, the adverb frequency goes after the auxiliary. Okay? When using an adverb frequency in the negative or, or informing a question, we place it the main verb. For example, do you usually get up so late? See? Do you usually, do auxiliary, do subject, usually, Albert, get, okay? Do you usually get up? I don't 
usually get up. Okay, example. Let's see. The, an example. We take a vacation at least once annually. In this case, the time of expression goes at the end. He is often late for work. Simple, no? We seldom see John. When we have a time expression like twice, twice daily. My dentist told me to floss twice a day. My dentist told me to flush daily. Simple, no? Okay. A little pause, and then we come back. Just the rest as well. Okay.
Oh, it is almost time. So we are just going to wait a few seconds and then we'll find this session is over. Just a few seconds more. And we will see. One more Well, the time is over, so see you next time. Bye.